right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fatty Kudair, local realtor here in Ottawa with Sutton Group Ottawa. And this show is all about businesses, small business communities here in Ottawa. Just bring them on the show and really shed some light on what this city is all about. Mm -hmm. And today we are joined with Danielle Draver from Organized Spaces. Hi, Danielle. Hello. Thank you, Fatty. So why did you choose to get into it? Mm -hmm. I love serving people. I have a big like heart for service and I love, I just love organizing. It's like, it's, it's in me ever since I was little, you know, when I would get my Halloween candy, I'd like put it all in like these different compartments and I just, it comes naturally to me and I wanted to choose something that I could do that would like m make me feel good and that I was good at, yeah. but that would also make a difference in the world. Like, I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And a lot of people want help and they just like don't know where to start. And so, yeah, that's why I chose to do this so that I can make a difference. Like one closet at a time, one bedroom at a time, one home at a time, yeah. you know. And that's the thing too. Like it's uh, when you find something that you love to do, mm. it changes everything about how you deal with it as a job or as a career. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because then it's like, it doesn't feel like work. I tell you this from, from experience, like. I do not feel like I work. Mm -hmm. I actually feel like I just every day I get up, I just put on a nice suit, go out, have fun with friends, sell homes, sell businesses, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Like so cool. that's when you get to that stage, it just makes it so much worth it mm -hmm. because then you're just, you know, if you get to a point where you're doing something that you love, you never have to work again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that to me is, is definitely says a lot about you as your character, like mm -hmm. the way that you're you're looking at this, it's more of a passion than anything. Mm -hmm. And then that transpires on, and I've seen it firsthand, again, like how you kind of come up on the other side and like people see the results from it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do people go about engaging you? Yeah, so I had you have a website. I, I put a lot of effort into my website because I wanted it to be a place that felt good. Mm -hmm. Like there's... I. I think there's a feeling that you get when you when you visit my website that is like approachable and feels clean and calm. And so I wanted people to be able to learn about my past, why I decided to organize, how I can help you, my mission. So my, my website is a great page. And then I just started an Instagram account for the first time. Oh, well, not for the first time, but for my business. <laughs> Someone had a hand in that. Not me. <laughs> no, I know it's an important way to reach out. I just struggle with 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 integrating social media into my life um, in such a big way, but. I think it's important to be current, and yeah. so I've done that. There's uh, always that balance, right? Like, as long as you're doing it in a healthy balance. Yes. People don't have to know every single detail about your life, but it's more of what can I do to bring joy for other people, like the businesses that you're, you know, the, the, the folks that you're engaging in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, as long as you're respectful and it's not like, you know, you're not sharing personal information, all of that stuff, it's, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic way to advertise, to share the joy that you... you as you seem, like you seem to be having a lot of joy doing well, this. Thank you. Sharing with people. Yeah. The before and after photos are a life changing. They're fun, hey? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it's, it's undeniable that there's this feeling that you get when you look at like chaos and then you look at something that has a sense of order. What I think what happens too is when we organize, we show respect to the things that we have. Yeah. And I think that's important. Like respect your home is a sense of respecting yourself too. And yeah, it's like this feeling of care. And I want my home to have to to feel like that when people walk in. I want them to feel like there's respect and care and love here. And it's a place where they can come and feel safe and it's clean and welcoming. I want all those things. And I want people to, if that's what they want, I want to help people achieve yeah. that. And it's funny you say this because like we've, multiple times we've touched on uh, the whole sort of mental health and mm -hmm. how it's related. Mm -hmm. And I've had somebody before as well too on my podcast, a couple of people actually on my podcast that are, we're, we're talking specifically about mental health mm -hmm. and uh, one of the psychologists, the other one is a, is a practicing uh, coach as well too, talking about mental health and all of that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like the that sort of relationship between the two for your business? Mm -hmm. I think it's undeniable that your space has a reflection on how you feel inside and, and in your mind. I know that they've done a lot of studies on even like the difference between men and women and women are even more affected by the the chaos or the clutter in yeah. their homes than men are. Yeah, it, it takes a toll. 
visually it takes a toll. We're like always processing all these things. And so our brain has to like be like, okay, where is that thing? There's stuff everywhere. So visually, like visually it's exhausting, but also the burden of all the energy of all these things and searching and the frustration. I can't find my sweater that I wanted to wear. I can't find my boots. Mm -hmm. Where is that thing? That frustration, that resentment that maybe you start to build on kids or partner or whatever. to yourself too. Exactly. You're so hard. You don't want to be doing the cooking or the cleaning or all of that stuff. And like, yeah. Biggest example for me is like I'll do the laundry and I'm ADHD. I'll just throw it on the bed and I'll deal with it later. Mm. But then later I'm like, well, where is that sweater? Where is that you know underwear? Where is this like? And it just gets to the point where like you're resenting yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm speaking from experience, like literally resenting myself. Going like, if I'm gonna take like ten minutes trying to find that outfit, that's ten minutes that I'm wasting. Exactly. But if I had put it away properly the first time, then I'm only wasting a minute because I know where it is. Mm-hmm. I just go and open the drawer. There's the underwear. Yeah. There's the shirt. There's this, and then I'm out. Yeah. I'm getting dressed in five minutes versus having to look for it for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And so something else, I'll I'll talk to my clients. Okay. Why do you think you're not putting your clothes away? Okay. That's kind of an issue, right? Mm -hmm. So why is it? And I might ask you that. Like, why do you think you don't want to put your clothes away? I'm I'm getting, I'm I'm sitting in the hot seat right now, guys. Yeah. Looks like the interview is reversed. (laughs) So for me, it's honestly, I think it's a lot of it is time. Uh I'm like, I'll do it later. Uh And then later it never comes Mm -hmm. because I, I have this habit of packing so much into my time. Mm -hmm that FOMO, I guess. It's like, I want to do this, but I want to do this, but I want to do this. And, yeah. and I also, I'm a bit of a people pleaser sometimes, mm. which is something that I know about myself. And I'm starting to say no to a lot of things that I, I don't necessarily serve me properly. So I think that's basically it for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two things. There's a really cool book called Essentialism mm-hmm. that if you're interested in like the art of saying no and like respecting yourself, it's really, it's a really cool read. But yeah, it's about, I think, in terms of putting clothes away, finding a way possibly to make it fun, like throw on some music and like do it or do it in a way that's like really simple. For me, folding takes too long. I don't really like it. So I hang, I hang, I hang. I can see everything. I try to hang as much as I can. That's personally the way that I've managed to try to put my clothes away as much as as much as possible. Also, having fewer items <laughs> makes it easier yeah. to put your clothes away, right? And the biggest thing too, I find, and then this is something that I actually incorporate also in my in, in my viewing homes and stuff like that for people. When I feel like when the laundry is far away from where it needs to go, mm-hmm. it's definitely a struggle for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So, for example, when you're looking at a laundry room that's on the the same living space on the upstairs, and it's you know you have a little bit of shelving that you can put all the towels and all of that stuff away properly. And you're not wasting time. And then it's mm-hmm. right next to your room. So like it's easily, you know, it's done. You just block it over and put it away. Mm-hmm. Versus when it's downstairs, that's really I, the, the biggest struggle. It's absolutely. Like, you got to go downstairs and get it. And sometimes you're just lazy. You don't want to go downstairs and get it. And then by the time you get it, you're just like, I just did it because I had to. And then like, mm-hmm. you just don't have time to put it away. Mm-hmm. So if you can reduce efficiency is the key, I think. Yeah. In this situation. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and finding tips and tricks like, why am I struggling with this? What do I not like about it? Oh, I find it boring. Okay, listen to a podcast while you do it or, you know, have a conversation on a speakerphone with a friend while you fold laundry. And there's, yeah, there's lots of ways and, you know, feel free to reach out. We can talk more about how to make those like mundane or difficult tasks, how to make them enjoyable or how to how to add clarity to yeah. that. Like I can absolutely offer lots of tips and tricks for that. Yeah. And the other thing too is like I'm, we were talking about this at the beginning, I'm a huge like opponent of like making sure that like if if something doesn't bring in value to your life like what I mean by that is like you know for a fact as a business owner I can only deal with 10 15 things those are my area of expertise in the business but for example like you know putting up signs that's not part of my my area of expertise and it wastes time so I hire it out yeah find ways to like hire things out Mm -hmm. is not really it's not wrong there's nothing wrong with it In fact, it's probably, you'll end up buying yourself a lot more time. Absolutely. So you just have to find like, wait, what can I offload and what can I keep as a business or as a, a you know, again, if you're running your life as a business, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. And I encourage for that for people who feel like they really want to organize, but for some reason they don't make it a financial priority. You know, there's so many other ways that we waste our money and like or spend our money, you know, we'll easily go to a restaurant and spend a couple hundred dollars on a meal. But think about that and hiring an organizer and what that will bring to your life in consequence to that. All of the space that opens up, the money you save too by 
not having to buy that extra thing. You well, found that thing. Exactly. Okay. Like a, having a cleaner come in, you know, once every couple of weeks. Yeah, sure. It's $120, $130. But I would rather do that than, you know, go out to a restaurant and spend two hours at a restaurant. And I'm going to spend the $120 either way mm -hmm. nowadays with, the, with nowadays pricing. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel as good about it later on. Mm -hmm. I do feel about the clean home much better. Oh, yeah. You yeah. come in and you're feeling good for like a good two, three weeks when it's clean. Yeah. Like it's not a, I think it's just prioritizing what's important for you is Absolutely. really where it comes to down yeah. to it. It's yeah. not just about financials. Mm -hmm. And hiring an organizer is going to help with like the, the physical home, but also your mental space. You know, the, those benefits are so wide. Yeah. And is it safe to say that a cluttered space is more like a cluttered mind? Absolutely. And sometimes a cluttered mind creates a cluttered space, you know? It's a vicious cycle, uh -huh, for sure, uh -huh. sure. But starting with, like, having somebody just come in at, or having a therapist, too. Like, there's so many different ways where we can help with that clutter. But having somebody come in and just create some clarity, create some systems for you that you can then follow. You know, I don't have to come in all the time. We can have, see each other twice a year or something where we do a refresh. But yeah. to come in and just be able to set some systems in place, create zones, create things that work for you. And then from then we're building a foundation and you can live life to the fullest. Yeah. And then the, the cool thing, like I was chatting with somebody else, uh, they've hired an organizer a while back. And like I, when I asked, I'm like, well, tell me a little bit more because I'm interviewing you and I want to know a little bit more about mm. this. Her thing was, it was so much fun. Mm. Like I can't wait because we do it, they do it twice a year and I can't wait for when she's coming in next. Because at the, at, again, it's it's creating that sort of declutter, easy space. Mm -hmm. The the mind is a lot less, like it's not weighing on you as much. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, and now is the perfect time as we're transitioning into the colder months. You know, some of our summer things are not lo no longer being used again. So bringing somebody in to help with you know a seasonal swap or what items do you not use this summer? Okay, let's get rid of them, leave mm -hmm. more space. And yeah, help with that kind of transition as we're built going from these busier times to like slowing down, getting ready for yeah. winter. I, a big one for me was, I think I did a purge about maybe six months ago. I was looking at all my soccer jerseys that I wore over the years. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, I had probably close to like 42 soccer jerseys. I'm like, I don't need to play on those terms. I probably need one white, one dark, mm -hmm. and then one color just in case if I'm ever going to pick up a game and it's like, yeah. Just take all three. But 42, mm -hmm. did not need 42. So I had to give them all away. And it's like, I don't wear any of these. Like, mm -hmm. I just give them away. Mm -hmm. Give them to Valley Village or some other mm -hmm. places like the Salvation Army. Anything that you could, someone can actually use it again. And it's not going into the dumpster. So tell me a little bit more about this. Because, you know, in your package, a lot of the times you end up hauling away stuff. Mm -hmm. Where does that go? Mm-hmm. Well, so I live in Wakefield and close to Wakefield, there's a community called Rupert and they have an amazing community center with a consignment or like a thrift store in the basement that's 100% run by the community and all the profits go towards the community. So it's just like an amazing program. And so when I haul a whole carload of donations away, they all go to the Rupert Community Center and that is like that direct direct money is funneling back into the the community members, into the sports teams, into the families that are struggling. And it's a really really beautiful space. Amazing. Yeah. So basically, like it's not going to you know places. I don't I'm not mentioning names, but it's not going to places where it's a profit. I try not. Yeah I, yeah, I I try to avoid that. Yeah, but I will help my clients navigate maybe selling items so that they can make money. That pays for the service. There's lots of kind of ways that we can. If there's a will, there's always a way, right? Like if, you know, for example, like I'll give you a simple one. I'm looking at, it's not an advertising by any means. I have this massive table, but I feel like every time I'm getting into my house, it's like just really massive. Like mm -hmm. I don't need it. I hardly ever sit down and eat at the table. Yeah. And if we do, it's just the three of us, maybe five of us at, at some point. I don't need that much of a space. So now I'm like, well, I got to give it away. I don't necessarily want to sell it, but I want to give it away to some homes uh, and I'm thinking actually some of the people that came from Gaza, like I'm going like, to give it away. Just, yeah. Here we go. Just tell me when and where and I'll, I'll haul it. For Absolutely. You. But then I'm also not going to go and buy like a brand new table. I'm just going to go and get something that's used because at the end of the day, like I'm, I only use it maybe once a week yeah. for dinner. Yeah. Like it's not a, it's not a huge, you know, dinner is not a huge thing for us at, at the, my household because of the nature of my job yeah. and this and that. And a lot of the times it's like kids are here, there, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So just trying to be able to do it in such a way that it brings a little bit of joy 
yeah. makes it a lot easier, a lot simpler to deal with. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm not attached to it because it, when I bought the table, it was just like in a rush. I'm trying to get the house all set up before the kids move in. And now it's like, okay, well, what can I do to let go, mm-hmm. but in a joyful way, mm-hmm. in a way that brings a little bit of joy to multiple people, not just me. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. Awesome. How did you feel giving away 39 of your jerseys? Honestly, I after I know. did, so when, when I was doing it, I was like, oh, but I really had fun mm-hmm. with this team. And like I started mm-hmm. reminiscing on some of the good things. Yeah. Like a lot of happy memories playing soccer, and I love playing that game. It's like to me, it's like where I, between that and CrossFit is where I lose myself. Yeah. Zero thinking, I'm just really playing. But then giving it away to somebody, I'm like, well, you know what? Like somebody can have, make those memories again in, in those shirts and those jerseys. Um, so I don't like I can just I can still hold on to the memories. I don't have to hold on to the shirts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In a way. But then after I gave them out, I had so much space in that drawer because like that drawer was only for soccer jerseys. Now that drawer can fit all of my soccer stuff. I don't need two drawers for the soccer yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. So I created space. Absolutely. I feel much lighter mm-hmm. in that aspect. Now I got to do it for the rest of the house. I got to go through my wardrobe because I also like another thing too that I, I was. I've done over the last five years, I lost about 70 some pounds. Mm -hmm. So I have so many things that I've I've given some, but now I'm like, well, I don't need those memories. Mm -hmm. I don't need uh, how I felt when I was in those clothes to make me feel good about how I am today. I just maybe need one item to remind me not to go back there, but that's about it. So giving away those is going to be the the next challenge and then hopefully reduce that, that it's easier for me that, you know, Again, I'm not using the full closet. Maybe I'm using a quarter of it or half of it, and yeah. I can, you know, repurpose that. Absolutely, and help other people who, you know, are professionals that, you know, could really use a new blazer or something, yeah. and they can't afford it. And wow, like look at this nice blazer. There's, there's so much joy in helping other people who are struggling. I find so that's great that you're. That that's you're doing that's that. something that I've learned from my mom. Like she's always been. She's a bit of a hoarder when it comes to that. And I'm, mom, sorry about this, but. Normally, what she does is like she'll, she'll always have that sort of knack for people that are in the community that will need this. Yeah. So I'm like, well, why are you hoarding? She's like, somebody's going to need this someday. Mm. And to almost no fail, like regularly, she's giving stuff away. I'm like, oh, yeah, it fits so and so. I'm going to give them this full suit that I got from this other person. So she's the connector when it comes that's to stuff sweet. like that. But that's her thing. And it makes her feel really good about herself. And yeah. like, you know, the fact that she's helping the community and all of that. And like, it's it's uh, it's a way to like like I'll give you an example. There was this kid from the neighborhood, from her neighborhood, that knew about this, and he knocked on her door about maybe three years ago. He was going to a job interview, and like she full, full on gave him a full suit that I used to wear fifteen years ago that mm-hmm. doesn't fit me anymore, but it was perfect for him. Aww. He got the job. He came back and he just. I got the job. He that's was so awesome. Happy. But like stuff like this, like, <laughs> you know, so good. It, that's just her thing. Yeah. So being able to like, you know, let go of stuff and then just say, you know what, like this no longer serves me, but it's going to hopefully serve somebody Absolutely. better. I feel like that should be kind of like the the slogan of organized spaces. <laughs> of everyone. Okay. We we all we all can learn to live with less and and it feels so much better. Well, that's the thing. Like it's just we we end up hoarding things, adding things to our life. And like I said at the beginning, like at the end of the day, nobody's going away with all of it. No. You're going to no. go away with if, nothing. If anything, it's it, it can cause a, an issue for the future generations. Think about parents that are like really struggling to declutter their homes. And then they're like leaving their children with these huge, huge basements and yeah. garages filled with things that their kids have to go through. Like it's, yeah, think about the consequence of that too. Oh, yeah. You know? I could tell you like, so this is something that we notice quite often with the elder generation, like the older generation, like the baby boomers and stuff like that trying to sell their homes and trying to downsize uh, is being able to say you gotta let go 90% of this like you're you're going to a a retirement home where are you gonna put this and and that's normally the the issue and then it becomes a bit of a hot topic between them and the kids Mm -hmm. so having someone like again impartial like yourself coming in and and really just shedding some light on it and just saying like you're not gonna be able to take it there No, you know like figure out the way that you can let go in a way that it's healthy and it's happy and it actually adds a little bit of joy for you. For sure, uh, for sure. It's it's really the the idea. So what can we do to, you know, again, get started on the right foot, 
and then continue doing mm-hmm. that? Like, what are your suggestions for folks out there? Yeah, my suggestion for you is to start little by little and to make organizing um, um, not something that you have to like dedicate eight hours on a Saturday to, but it is part of your daily life. Mm-hmm. Every time you handle an item or look at something, is this really useful? Do I love this thing? Could somebody else use it? And just slowly, bit by bit, start to shed those things from your home. Start to open up space. You know, every time you open that that drawer, oh, those are socks. Oh, those socks have holes in them. Like, okay, I can get rid of that. Yeah. Oh, there's five spatulas in my in my utensil drawer. Okay, I'll I just only keep. Need two. I only need two. I need my favorite one, and then I need my backup just yeah. in case my favorite one is That's dirty or you know. So it's not having to do this like huge overhaul, which I am here for you if you want to do that. But it's about slowly integrating it as a way of life so that it doesn't have to be this huge momentous thing that you that is really stressful. Yeah. But it's slowly, you know. And this is one of the things that I wanted to mention as well, too. Not, not, I'm not suggesting that you're doing it for free, but like one of the biggest things about loving what you do is like you are willing to do it for free sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's it's one of the reasons why people really succeed and they find something that they love doing, that they're able to do it for a long time. It's because they, they, just, they can do it. Even if it's free, they still want to do it. Mm-hmm. I think for you, just having that sort of, like, how would you feel about one day you wake up and, like, nobody needs the services anymore because everybody's organized? Tell me. That's a... I would be, I would be really, really happy. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to find another job, and yeah. that's okay. Well, we'll figure something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe real estate. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, though. Like, it's when you're on a crusade to kind of change things, mm-hmm. it feels like at the end, like, if, if that ever happens, I will be completely satisfied. Yeah. Like, if I don't ever have to ever sell a house, but everybody knows how to buy a house and how to go about selling their own, I'll be completely satisfied mm-hmm. with it. Because then I know... The reason why I got into it, because a friend of mine a long time ago ended up getting completely losing everything they, they owned oh, because their sad. dad decided to buy a home. He didn't know what he was doing, lost about $70,000 mm. on a home that would have been about 140000 mm. Just lost it completely. So just being able to, you know, like the, the reason why I got into it is nobody needs to lose a home. Everybody mm. needs to have a roof over their head. Yeah. If that's happening and with I, they don't need my help, that's amazing. Mm, mm. I'll find something else. I'll maybe a cafe on the beach somewhere. That sounds fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's always been sort of in the back of my mind. <laughs> that's your retirement that's plan, my buddy. Retirement plan: a cafe <laughs> on the beach somewhere with some, you know, cocktails, lattes, that kind of stuff, and then some good time. Danielle, really appreciate you being here. Oh, this you. means a lot to the community. Also, you know, the services that you bring, it's something that I believe in my heart of heart, everybody needs it, yeah. regardless of how organized you are how OCD you are we all need a little bit of organizations here and there we all need a little bit of shedding here and there I agree and then really like just being able to kind of let go of things open up the space for more things to come mm-hmm. is, a, is a good way to look at it you know just because you're letting go it doesn't mean that you you can't fill the space with something else and when I say that fill the space with something that's more joyful more time making art playing with your kids it's being creative you don't have to spend nine hours of cleaning if you can spend three yeah, absolutely. And that's the biggest thing. Again, the time is like the one asset that you can never make more of. If you are able to just generate more time yeah. by having declutter a space, I think that's the ultimate. Mm-hmm. You hit the goal on the head. So again, thank you so much for sharing your story and your mm-hmm. success. And, and we'd love to, you know, again, provide you and bring you more business and then really just kind of show the, the folks out there. So for that, without further ado, I just wanted to ask you, is there something that you want to bring, maybe a promotion, Absolutely. like that, that we can help the folks out there mm-hmm. for watching this episode and, and really learning more about you? What can they do to maybe take advantage of? Yeah. Yeah. So anyone listening, if you are interested, I'll, I'll be offering a 10% off of any package purchased. And yeah, that's just to kind of support you on your journey. To so let's do that. Get started. Promo code hashtag podcast 2024. There yeah. we go. Right. So we're going to use that as a promo code. Just reach out to Danielle. You'll have her uh, contact. Finally, she's on Instagram, so you should do an Instagram <laughs> message. I made one business. post. <laughs> made one post. Hopefully, we're going to make plenty more posts to come. Yeah, for uh, sure. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing the story. And for folks that are watching, uh, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little bell icon so you can get more and more uh, alerts about every episode, every business that we bring to light. And if you have any businesses that you think of in the city that, you know, made an impact on your life and you, or you want them to just at least be featured on this, mm. we'd love for you guys to 
put that in the comment. Give us the name of the business. I'll personally reach out and bring them on the podcast. As everybody that I've brought on the podcast, it's a fantastic place to be. Five minutes in, you feel like you're home. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate. Just let us know who that business is and we'll bring you on. Thanks again for watching. Yeah, thank you.